I'll get over here on this spiritual side of things to do no harm to nobody. Right. But God knows us and our hungers. God loves us like a father and nurtures us, at us like a mother. God draws us to another and claims us as the people of God. Knowing this, let us worship God. Welcome to the New Camp Church. We are a forward-leaving expression of Christianity, with an individual's expression of their faith is welcome. We also welcome those who are joining us by Zoom. Announcements. For announcements, uh, on the back of the bulletin, we have our first Saturday breakfast will be on November 2nd. There will be a sign-up sheet in the dining room. If you have any questions, please see Carol. Uh, we had our first Saturday yesterday. Numbers will follow. Uh, there is a workshop for elders in October. Information is on the sanctuary door as well as on the table with cards. We are also starting to take donations for Santa socks um, and for the spaghetti dinner that is coming up. If you want any details, please contact Carol. Those are the all that I have. Uh, today is World Communion Sunday. Um, I don't know if anyone else has any other announcements. Uh, for the breakfast yesterday morning, uh, gas were at 18. We had uh, 11 takeouts uh, and uh, members working as was 10, total 39. Uh, our donation amount was 186. It was a good breakfast. Yes. It was a lot of food. Yes, Bob. Oh. Oh, so I'll have more. Uh, I remember the last month's breakfast, we had a new couple that, that I did recognize that, that came to breakfast. And as they were leaving, uh, a young man says, uh, we'll see you again uh, next month. And as they were coming in, Yesterday he said, I told you I'll see you next month. <laughs> and as he was leaving uh, uh, yesterday, he said, I'll see you next month. Yeah. Wow. Uh, PIP Partners in Progress came, uh, I think it was last Monday, and looked at our facilities, seemed to be favorably impressed. She was going to Chamber of Commerce to get the specifics on the sizes of the rooms and all that kind of thing. Uh, so it's looking good, but you never know until things are finalized. Uh, I guess that's about where things stand. Our current renters are very impressed with us. The current who? Our current renters. Oh, renters. Oh. Are very impressed Thanks. with us. We're good. They think we're friendly. They think we're helpful. Um, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So we must be holding our end, holding up our end of the bar. <laughs> I'm hoping, maybe, hoping and praying that we can continue operating as a. Um, open and affirming church <clears throat> in the midst of this otherwise conservative area. <clears throat> we are a light to the community. <laughs> a night light. <laughs> <laughs> We're not a blinding light, just a nice pleasant light. <laughs> uh, there's a East Central District Council meeting this next Sunday at Tria Dava. Regional Assembly is coming up on the 17th, I think, 18th, something like that. 18th, 18th, yes. Yeah, I will be attending it. I don't know if anybody else, but I was still thinking about it. So. I'm, I'm trying to rearrange my calendar and schedule with other things going on to try to make that work. Uh, no promise. I, I think I have room for one more person in my pickup if you want to ride with me. Uh, if you want to do that, that's fine. We can be done waiting for it. Right. Uh, I'll let you know. Okay. Um, but I know the other two 
were still going with me, so I don't know. I know the one I think is for sure that the older gentleman is being a little stubborn, so we'll see when he does. Uh, any other announcements? After the peace of Christ, your name needs to be with us. Josiah will play the opening prayer of him, 593. Lead me, Lord, 593. The title of the message, 
sins that do not lead to death. We are on a journey discovering the understanding of sin. And I think there's, my opinion right off the I'll say is, I think we have emphasized um, sin or falling short a little too much in our modern day, uh, which hinders us, which equals to becoming, making us feel guilt driven in a lot of ways when life is so complex that it's hard not to have both uh, the uh, both sides of the dualistic life in which we live. So I'm going to read First uh, John five sixteen and seventeen. If you see any brother or sister commit a sin that does not lead to death, you should pray and God will give them life. I refer to those sins who do not lead to death. There are the sins that lead to death. I am not saying that you should, not, should pray about that. All wrongdoing is sin. There, and there is sin that does not lead to death. It's an interesting way of looking at things. I'm going to read uh, a little funny. I think this kind of really kind of explains how, or gives an illustration of how complex life is. And it says, curse words come back under the heading of self-control. A young man regularly cut the, the pastor's lawn. One day the boy announced to the pastor that he would no longer be able to mow his yard because he was leaving for college. The pastor asked the young man if he knew anyone who would be interested in taking over his job. The young man said that he did not, but offered to sell his lawnmower to the pastor. <laughs> the pastor thought about the offer and concluded that buying the mower would be a good, uh, be the best solution. So he purchased the mower from the young man. The next day, the young man was walking by the pastor's house and saw him pulling, pulling the mower's start rope. The pastor called him over and asked, how do you get this thing started? The young man apologized. Oh, I'm sorry, I forgot to tell you that you have to curse at the mower before it will start. <laughs> there are times when you have to curse at it a lot. The minister said, well, I don't think I can do that. It's been a long time since I used any curse words. I wouldn't even know where to start. The young man encouraged him. I tell you what, you just keep pulling on that rope long enough, and those curse words will come back right to you. <laughs> I, I think that kind of illustrates the whole issue and problem of sin. Uh, I, I, I gave the illustration that uh, there are times when uh, usually traffic doesn't bother me a whole lot, but there are times when words just come bubbling out of my mouth. <laughs> that's, it, you just can't stop. Uh, at least, that's, that's, you know, I guess maybe I lack self control. I don't know. But I, I think that's the complexity of who we are. It, it just is that. I think that. we all do that. I think, uh, I think we all do that. Yeah. I mean, that. Sometimes that's the only thing that we use it for. Oh, yeah. I think it, it does. <laughs> for me, it does. So you don't make it out on somebody else. So, so sitting, <laughs> sitting relieves the pressure. <laughs> <laughs> what are you saying that the word is saying? I, I, oh, well, it's all the word is saying. Well, they're all in trouble. I, 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 think, I, I don't care really who you are. You have some kind of word that you don't ordinarily say. It may not be as far as you I know, but there are something that pushes you to say it. Uh, in a time of passion or whatever it is, or madness or whatever it is, uh, that's for sure. Uh, so, I kind of chuckled in that story. Uh, so, you stub your toe or something, you know what I mean? It, it, it just, well, it just comes flying out. Yeah, it just comes flying out. Huh? They come flying out. They just come flying out. Flying out. What are they? Well, you know, surely it has one more that she says. Just one. 
And she says, I'm trying my best not to do that anymore because I have to be good with God. I said, I don't think God's gonna bother you too much. So one night, I went down there, and she did something and the word came out. And she goes, I said, there's nothing wrong with that. I mean, it's not a bad first word, but you know, she's just, well, I just can't do it anymore. I said, but it makes you feel better, doesn't it? She said, oh yeah. I said, well then, <laughs> <laughs> problem solved, you know? Is this a, an interesting, the whole concept of sin and all this is really an interesting concept, I, I think. Uh, so, I, I think we want to remember also to this day that we are celebrating our 175th anniversary, and we're having a dinner afterwards. And I, and I think that really marks a point that we should be happy to be in this church that existed for 175 years. Even though we are a small in number, we still should take a certain point of satisfaction of knowing that we're still here, we're still carrying the church on, and we don't know what lies in the future. And so, what we are doing our responsibility, I see, as we just said earlier, being a light to the community for an open and affirming church. I think that's a even if we are a dim light. <laughs> no, we might not be a beacon, but we are a, a, a light. Yeah, yeah. That shines. A little candle light. <laughs> well, you, you know, you see these little lights that they have on trailers anymore. They're about the size of a thumb. And they actually give off a lot of light. It, it's legal to have them rather than a big, big light. So you don't need a great big light to put off a lot of light. Oh, no. It's yeah. Yeah. Dials are... The technology of guidelines is really a great thing. So, uh, I mean, we don't know the effect that we have just being here. And, and with the flag, uh, the symbol on the door, you don't know. We don't know the butterfly effect that we may be producing. And I definitely believe in a butterfly effect. In fact, it may happen 10 years down the road, or it may happen now. We don't know. And, and I think we should be steadfast in, in what we do. I want to start by saying there are many good people doing many good things in the world around us. And sometimes I think we forget, we get too caught up in sin and worrying about doing things that are wrong in our life, and we forget that I think there's more good being in the world than what we see as being bad or, you know, evil or, you know. I, I think that, like the storms and stuff that, that are, are down in, in North Carolina, the, the heat here and there, and another storm's going to hit Florida. You, you know, we... <laughs> the idea in which we live in, which is dualistic, as we were talking about, you have to have these disasters in order for good to come out. Does good exist by itself without having something to be good for? So, the idea that sin has to exist in order for us to know what it is to be sinless. Or do we can we live and so and understand the concept of a sinless life without having that them curse words in our back door or in our cupboards? I I, I think I, my my understanding of it, the way I view it is we live in this dualism that has to exist. And the idea we're not gonna get to it today, because I have to I'm told I have to cut the message short. <laughs> yeah. Because we want to celebrate. Yeah. So the, 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 the idea is that later on, next Sunday or whenever I get to it, is that some people take on the harm so others do not have to do it. And that is a, that is a concept of, uh, so some people sin, so to speak, to keep others from sinning. So you, you take a soldier who defends our country, who is willing to kill for us to protect us so we don't have to do it. So, so that, that, that's, that's an idea that's down the line that we get to. Uh, so, how much of, of you, know, you know, sometimes we, we see the world around us as burning down in, in, in different ways. I mean, if you watch the news, there's a lot of tragedies that are going on, not only in this country and around the world people of wars and, and what have you, just famines and just nature taking this course along 
of the way. So my question is, how much of, of this are humans responsible for? Because they're less than good stewardship of the earth. I, I think because we do the seven deadly sins, we have, how, what, what effect does that have on our reality around us, in the world around us? We continue to use fossil fuels, uh, or you can blame the, the climate is changing. I don't think anybody can disagree that the climate is not changing. How much of that is done by human responsibility? Or as some of my conservative friends say, oh, it's just about cycling over and over again. I, I don't, I, I, I think that that opinion shows lack of stewardship for the earth. We have the technology to do things better with less greed and, and more responsibility, but the right people don't seem to be able to make enough money off of it. So how do we engage with the people in, in North Carolina or wherever beyond our thoughts and prayers without becoming the problem? I, I think sometimes we, we say, you know, we should be doing something. But recovery takes time and has to be done in a systematic way. We'll take, for example, the disaster in North Carolina. There has to be a systematic way in, in order to recover and build. I, I heard a lady who was really upset because she was up in some hall or somewhere and nobody came to her. And it's like, okay, you're living way up there wherever you're living, you must know that when disaster comes, you're not at the, the, the easiest accessible place to get to. When all this, so, you know, if, if you dump a whole bunch of stuff down there, like building material, what have you, and it's the wrong thing, then it becomes a problem. So I, I think it has to be, did you have something to say? Yeah, I, I, my cousin lives in the mountains. She lives just north of Asheville. Um, and lives on Lake Lore, but on the northern side anyway. Um, she said that they had to stop people from coming in to help because on one day there were 30 near misses in the air above Asheville because everybody was trying to come in and help without being organized. Yeah. And so they had to make it a no-fly zone. And so to your point, there has to be a systematic way of doing it. Yes. If you don't do it in, a, in the proper way, you create more havoc. Yes. Right. So then it becomes, seeing how we're using the word sin, then it becomes sin to some degree. Right. Yes. But they were also living under a false sense of security, saying nothing can happen in the West Hills of North Carolina because the hurricanes don't come in through there. You know, the, the and when they were putting out this storm system and where it was coming through, but the North Carolina government, and they weren't getting their stuff together, they didn't have it, like he, like Shane said, they don't have a system in you. You know, they don't, when you're, when you're sending out the warnings and people aren't listening, it's like the same thing that happened with me one time. About 2003, we had this horrible snowstorm, you know, it was like five days, I was stuck in the hospital, and I was up in central nursing, so I correlating everything, food, staffing, everything, you know, patient care for five nights and five days. So I was warning them, the head director of nursing and everything, I was warning them before the storm came, I said, please bring in extra cots, please bring in, you know, meals ready to prepare, have everything ready, extra blankets and everything, because this is going to be a major storm. They were laughing me off. So nothing, they wouldn't listen to me. So I got caught with the work of everything. And it, it really, really angered me. I mean, I was calling the state police, I was calling the National Guard, begging them, somebody, to help get into the kitchen to bring food out for the patients. And I, you know, I had 17 units I was responsible for. 350 patients. So, yeah, I mean, you have to have a system in place. You have to listen to the warnings, and you have to be prepared and have people on the ground before this thing hits. And it's just, it just mind-boggling. I, I don't think we're paying attention enough. I, no. to, to your point, we're, we're not paying, we think it won't happen in our area. 
And I, and I think there is this, uh, was a false sense of security these people moved up into the hollers of North Carolina that nothing was going to happen to them. And, and I kind of chuckle like where I live. I live up on, we live up on, a, on the side of a hill. And, and if the water gets up to me, it's going to be Noah's Ark. But Yeah, we always joke that nobody's lied to us. <laughs> <laughs> but we could, uh, my, my ground migrates. So if it gets saturated enough, it could migrate. Yeah, and down it goes. So I, I'm not secure either, even though I'm up in height. Doesn't mean that I can't slide down because my road, down the road, for a eighth of a mile slides off all the time. And, and if I put a, I have big bikes, if I put a post in the ground, it don't take too many years and it's leaning at, at, at my gates. So I have a false sense of security in the sense that I think I'm not to Sharon's point, I did see on the news here they got hospitals with these cyber attacks. Yeah. They've got to get a system in play because yeah. they just went through something and they had to do everything physical, pen and paper. You know, and this woman had to harvest um, some, I don't know what it was, with a patient. They had to, they just really did it with their team and just look on your side. Yeah, I mean, could the generators go off? Yeah. The yeah. IV machine, they don't even know how to calibrate an IV without a machine anymore. Well, I know, but just like our everyday life, if it goes down, we can't do nothing. Right. But the positive part of that story was that team could. Yeah. yeah. They had people on it that could go back to doing it without the machine. Right. Because they and they're going to have it. to teach people to do it both ways. Yeah. And it was a woman doctor that was. That's doing right. It. And that's what got me. Like, you go. Yeah. But she was the woman. Yeah. She and that team. Yeah. Could do it. They did. We, we depend on computers and electronics way too much. I, I mean, I, I'm involved in shipping and receiving. Those people don't know how to write. No, maybe no more. If the computers go down, we're done. You just sit and wait. Well, they put out a sign, closed, computer town. Yeah. Nature still wins. Yeah. Because when they were talking to my sister in North Carolina, when they were putting out the warnings and the anticipated path of the storm, etc., they did not expect it to go and sit it was supposed to go below Asheville and over into Tennessee. Yeah. And so they were preparing for a marginal excessive rain storm like they're used to have it. And that was what they were told. Well, then at the last minute, <laughs> nature said, oh, no, I think we'll go and sit over here. So, so nature, nature still is ahead of us, no matter how much technology well, used to be a commercial back and don't mess with Mother Nature. Yeah, yep. Mother yeah. Mother. yeah. it's so you true. You still don't. So, so is, can Mother Nature or yeah, nature be considered evil? No. <laughs> See, that's a problem. It depends on your interpretation. Yeah. If you're going to go Native American, you can say Mother Nature has a... <clears throat> perhaps a, an evil side, a payback side, whatever, mm -hmm. and that because we aren't doing our fair share. So, but the, it depends on your point, of, you know, so how you're That's my it. point about stewardship. Uh, uh, are, are we, uh, is what we are doing to the earth responsible for the rise and the intensity of, the, of storms? I know, but to classify it as evil, I don't know, maybe it's just... Well, they'll call it sin. Well, right. yeah, I don't know about sin, <laughs> but, uh, because it, there is a different religion, like an in Indian right. religion, yeah. Cali, the destroyer, and, but she can also be, you know, right. they're a giving. A same. Yes. So you can look at it, then, when you have something like this, it's kind of a kick in the rear that right. maybe we ought to be paying better attention, right? and maybe more people are going to pay attention. So, so, so is that a sin? I, well, yeah, we're falling short of what we should be doing. And the whole concept of, of sin is falling short of what we should yeah. be doing. If so, you do that concept, then it is, but it's not evil because it's supposed to produce better. So does nature care what it does? It could. Does it? I mean, it depends it, it, on your view of nature. If you're going to take a, some of the natives, religions 
Yes. It was. Absolutely. There's a power there that they've named Mother Nature yeah. that cares. Christianity has taken all them gods away. And, and I think that's to our detriment. I, I think that's really the only Jew said we were disrespecting we're disrespecting celestial beings and the power of celestial beings. And John even the first John somewhere talks about that. Uh, we, we have denied their power and their existence. And, and, and I think that's, uh, that is, I think, is a sin. I, that's what I get out of Jude, that one section of it. You know, we're not supposed to do that. We're supposed to acknowledge that there are powers. Chris Patton's powers in the heavenly realms. Okay, that's what Paul talks about. So, what is that? But, you know, to get excited about whether there are all these separate powers, and there's a God that Spirit doesn't really matter as long as you realize there's a power beyond us. And to respect that power. Yeah, and then respect it. <laughs> yeah. Okay, the re respect of it, I can go with. But, but to say, as Christianity does, saying none of, them, none of these guys in the past amount to nothing. They're all false and, and, and they're really no gods at all. It, it, I think is, is an error in, in understanding the powers of the heavenly realms. Well, it's did not. We reorganized out to suit Christianity yeah. and put it all in one place. Yeah, all in one spot. We say, you know, mm -hmm. all right, fine. If you see it that way, that's great. But the power is still there. There's still an overarching. I think back in Genesis where you have the the heavenly cover. Yeah. In the one story. Yeah. The that to me makes more sense. And that power is up in that. So, so whether you want to argue about meaning of Mother Nature or saying it's one power or the power is there, name it as you wish. So, if, if we are, 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 are good, uh, serving a, a loving God, all loving God, then the argument becomes how do you make, how do you understand evil that happens, such as in these storms? So, doesn't he care about those people in North Carolina? Or the people in Florida, or the people in you know, wherever. Go ahead. Well, what do you mean by serving? Just because you show up at church every Sunday? No. What do you mean by serving? See, maybe we ought to be serving the earth and what we do yeah. and how we produce pollution and blah, 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 and take care of people, you know? That might be the true serving, not just showing up at church. Well, I understand it. So it has to be actions. You have to have actions. That's, that's what you have to have. You, have to, you can't just say thoughts and prayers with no actions. Go ahead, Shane. You said all loving. Okay, if God is all loving, then God is not necessarily all powerful. It's, it's a lot of a lot of our current assumptions about what modern Christianity defines as God are not necessarily don't go well together. You're right. You know, I and while I, I you know a little girl who's being raped by her uncle and is begging God to make him stop and God does nothing. You know, how much our free will is what people keep saying to me as a kid. I just, you know. I, I, I don't think we have free will. I mean, I've said that many times. Uh, we don't have free will. I mean, I, I think that's a, uh, we have, the most that we have is the freedom to choose or not to choose. And that's it. Yeah. There's no free will that I can free will myself to do whatever. That, that, that's a concept that enables to them uh, the, the, the Christianity that we don't approve of to judge other people. So everything becomes a free will choice. You chose to be the way you are. And, and you understand that issue but in the LGBT. Even in that freedom to choose, it's not up to you to choose maybe what you can choose, you know what I mean? You may not have any choices. Right, even in that. That's what I said. The most that you can do is choose or not choose. And sometimes you, you you don't have no choice at all. You simply act. And, and so free will doesn't enter into that at all. I mean, was it a free will choice that, that the storm in North Carolina was where it was? No. Now they, have to, they can only act in a certain way to, and, and there's only a, a, a progress to move forward. They don't have a free will. If they had free will, they would have, they'd have it back to where well, it was. It never happened. Yes. If you remember, we had 
pretty catastrophic floods here in 72 and 76. Yeah. People had lived there for decades with no problems, much as the people in North Carolina. It's not the people's fault that it happened. You were tending toward that. It's I'm not saying, I asked the question, is it because we lack good stewardship? It's not the people's fault. It's not the government's fault. Though both could have made different choices. It is and always will be whatever power you consider that controls our weather. So I remember uh, back farming when, when st uh, uh, strip farming became in, in, in the reality. Where you didn't farm one big field, whether it had hills or valleys or whatever on it. You contoured, contoured uh, planting so that it would, and, and strip with different uh, uh, crops so you would be rowed. I remember when that happened, I remember when, when the, the field guy or a, from the agriculture department whatever, came out with his little flags and he marked how we should plow and plant so it would be rowed. So we did that and erosion went down. So do we bear some responsibility if, if we don't adhere to the knowledge that we have? And if we, if we knowing that you plant, plow a field and, 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 uh, and strip force, we know we're gonna get erosion. So we are responsible for some of these things. No. And nothing is ever a total guarantee because I don't even know what's ever to say. You, you know, I mean, well, well, no, we understand now, this, yeah. it, it, whether or not we, we can do it better and do we have some responsibility in the erosion problem for one and, and cutting down all the trees and, and now we don't have no oxygen, uh, you know. Well, if it hadn't happened in Nashville, it would have happened in Tennessee. Right. Yeah. You know, it would have been one state or the other. I mean, not to, but the storms are increasing in length, they're increasing in frequency, you know, and it, worldwide, you know, typhoons and Taiwan and and just and just here. Yeah, I see the elephants over in India somewhere going through the water trying to get to rescue. So, you know, you got the forest fires in California, you got them down there in Australia, you have them up Canada. So it's the stewardship. I mean, we're not doing it right. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
considered sin. I have that freedom and liberty to do that. And it's not sin. It's a concept that's much deeper than what I just said, and it's not understood in a very good way. And I don't think Paul really writes it in a really good way. Galatians is all about freedom in Christ. That's a very important aspect of understanding sin. And, and so our two natures, even though we are both physical and, and spiritual, working them together in a way that allows us to live a physical reality plus also a spiritual reality is what freedom in Christ allows you to do. Now it doesn't mean that, like Paul said, you can't do whatever you want. That's not true. Doesn't get you to be a murderer or what have you and all this other stuff. But it allows you to commit these things, but yet still find your way to Christ. Christ will meet you there. Uh, how many ministries do we know that are prison ministries? These people understand that they did wrong, whatever. And the whole concept of wrong, and you know, did this person do this so this person didn't do it? It's very in-depth concept. I'm just glazing over it <laughs> tremendously. But it's very in-depth. Freedom in Christ is a concept that has to be understood in the totality of all human rights. Not just one select group. And, and you know, and, and a denomination or a government or what happened? Or gender. Or gender or sexuality. Uh, it has to be understood in the whole of humanity. And that is not that needs to be put forward in a much broader, excuse me, way. Or yeah. it could have been freedom, you know, Christ, you get freedom when you're not condemning people or you're not being condemned. Yes. And if everybody would do that, then we're loving our neighbors, we're treating each other with respect, that's the freedom. That's if you don't have those chains and shackles on, yes. like that hate, greed, you know. Yeah. I, I don't want to hate that person because of my faith. And, or, or my ideology. And, and, and sadly today, that's where we're at, and even in this country. There's a disdain for the opposite side, which I've tried to have more than I've ever seen in my lifetime. And that is not freedom in Christ at all. Not at all. The truth will set you free, in a way. That's the freedom. When, when you live in you know, your truth and respecting other people's truth, that's the freedom. We, we have this idea that our country was founded on freedoms for everybody, but it wasn't. This grew and continues to grow. We're not there yet, but we are a multinational, uh, multicultural country growing into this idea. We're not there yet. We'll see where the election goes, but we need to go, we need to move into that area, multicultural. But the, De the Declaration of Independence, what? That set, they were trying to set the tone. They were setting the foundation so that the country couldn't grow and evolve. When these yes. men were geniuses, they were able to look forward. Yes. But I also risk it. I agree. But also it was just to the other men there. Right. Right. It didn't include women mm -hmm. or multicultures or none of that. No, but, 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 but it allowed... But the principles to live by. I, I, it, it, I think the Constitution is a living organism that yes. has to grow and, and kind of, you have something to say. I don't know if you want me to say it. Probably not. <laughs> 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 I have been growing more and more uncomfortable in this church because even though we spoke about no politics, <laughs> it seems to crop up more and more often, when we agreed to the Democrats taking over, there would be no signage out, and now we have a big banner that stays up all the time. And you're speaking of, it depends on how the election goes as to whether our nation will almost even survive. Oh, but I know which way you prefer. I, 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 I'm not saying the nation won't survive, but we are moving to a multicultural nation, whether we like it or not. Whether it's this election or the next election or the next election, well, we know. 
We are moving in that direction. J just like the Civil War gave, gave the, uh, uh, the freed the slaves, it, it continues to expand and, and women's suffering, what have you. It, it will continue in that direction, whether it's done in this election or not. Yes. Um, just to speak to what you just said about this, um, from my perspective, um, the first thing is we're trying to survive as a church. Oh, well, let me finish. We're trying to survive as a, as a church. Uh, we didn't think in detail. We rented space to the Democratic Committee. But by doing that, we it makes no sense to limit what we know what they have to do in order to do what they do. If, if we don't want them to do what they have to do, then we need to give them back the money and tell them to go, it's, it's, a, money, it's, it's a survival thing, it's not for, for me. It's a survival thing for the church. It's not a political thing. What is, you're talking about the survival of the church. You have just cut off the largest part of this county from being comfortable coming here. And again, I say, our thought process in, 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 in deciding to, to Went to and I was, and we got we, we got to if it happens next year, that's that's a process that we have to have. We can't limit smaller signs would have achieved the same thing that could be taken in when they aren't there instead of having the difficulty of the banner. I'm not against Democrats, I'm against the thought process that me says I am less than, which is what seems to come across. I'm not saying Republicans are less than. That's the way it comes across. I mean, not agree. No, no. I'm not saying that at all. I'm saying that Jesus' way is a more inclusive way. You're the one who said it depends on the. Uh, election, how the if we continue to grow, I don't see to, that to grow to grow in a more inclusive multicultural direction, which we will go one way or the other. We will go that way, whichever president we have. It does not matter Republican or Democrat. We are all one people in this country. It is just, we have allowed ourselves to be so divided that <laughs> I used to be a Democrat. I would still be a Democrat, except for some of the rhetoric that came out of the mouths of your leaders. I'm an independent. Please, no. please, can we stop this now? I'm sorry. I know that you're. I, I think that, and I appreciate your frustration. That's a conversation we can have when we're not being recorded. Right. Right. No, you, you have to point it out. Is, is absolutely right, but it's not what I'm saying. I just think that at this point in time, we need to move on. I, I, I think all ideas should be examined. As on the light of, of, of scripture and whatever that is, that is. And, and I don't, I try not to take one side or the other, uh, only let, let the idea support itself. And uh, that's then I agree. We do not say the election, we do not stress either side. Agreed? Okay, amen. Uh, Josiah will play at the table of the Lord.
Lord, we lift up the offering to those who gave. May it be blessed and may it multiply the words and the wisdom. And may it be a welcoming to everyone. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. You may be seated. The hymn of communion, 398, be known to us and bring you bread.
Oh, my God. No, she's still here with us. Um, and, uh, yeah. Oh, we have to sing happy birthday.
upon you with kindness and give you peace. And a smile for the days ahead. Amen. Thank you.